Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. Micro, small, and medium enterprises to benefit from a 2.6 million US dollar financing facility to help withstand the impacts of COVID 19. Ectel shows tangible support to the National Emergency Management Organization. And a vibrant debating culture is emerging at the BTC. The government of St. Lucia on Friday, 20th November 2020, took a significant step in its efforts to build resilience amid the COVID-19 pandemic with the implementation of a grant loan facility to assist businesses. The measure forms part of the Economic Recovery and Resilience Plan announced by Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney. The Climate Adaptation Financing Facility, CAF, is a funding mechanism within the St. Lucia Development Bank, originally designed to offer climate change adaptation loans, which are affordable, equitable across socioeconomic and gendered lines, and provide incentives for preemptive vulnerability reduction. Taking into consideration the COVID-19 pandemic and its effects on the business sector, the CAF has been relaunched to include a business recovery program. According to Managing Director of the St. Lucia Development Bank, the facility in its new form will lend aid to micro, small and medium enterprises negatively impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. The intention is for us to be able to assist persons who have been impacted by COVID. The, during, during the past couple of weeks, we have attended a number of Zoom meetings, I, I presume most persons have. And one that we attended was Climate um, Finance in Common, where all of the development banks in the world were represented. And at that meeting, it was indicated that the development banks don't have resources to make up for lost revenue for everyone. But this particular program is to provide a level of support for persons who have been impacted. It will focus on self-employed persons um, who are registered. Part of the criteria is that you must be registered with an association or an organization for us to be able to track um, your progress. And you, the intention is for us to identify that you have at least been impacted by a 30% reduction in your overall turnover in your business. Enterprises will have access to loans ranging from $25,000 to $200,000. The terms and conditions of the loans will vary based on the enterprise and as such determinations will be made on a case-by-case -case basis. Vikram Kuteri is the World Bank's program leader for sustainable development and infrastructure in the Caribbean. The business recovery program expands the type of risk that the CAF can address to include the pandemic and its impact while still maintaining the CAF primary focus on climate adaptation and disaster risk reduction. Along with the possibility of combining grants with loans to help businesses through the liquidity crunch that so many are experiencing, the government and SLDB will be providing all borrowers with free training on business continuity and disaster preparedness planning to help them better reduce their vulnerability to future shocks. SLDB will also assist businesses in joining the Chamber of Commerce and other business associations that support and advocate for businesses of all sizes and sectors. The survival of St. Lucia small businesses is critical for the country's economic recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. It is clearly stated in the government's COVID-19 economic recovery and resilience plan. And we believe that the new CAF business recovery program will make a major contribution to the goal articulated in the plan. The CAF offers accessible loans to firms, community groups, and households for investments and or livelihood activities that support climate adaptation or disaster vulnerability reduction. Education officials are continuing to assess the impact of COVID-19 on the education sector. Chief Education Officer Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer this week headed a planning meeting held at the St. Joseph's Convent. The planning session not only discussed the blended learning approach since the closure of schools due to COVID, but also explored ways to improve overall student performance. Dr. Meyer says the session was informed by data collected from the eight education districts on Ireland. A focal point was students' access to devices. Dr. Meyer says while some districts are doing well, there are disparities which the ministry is addressing. 
Already an additional 6,000 loan books have been procured for distribution to students. Ensuring that we had the learning inventories, what exactly is happening with regards to online learning, with regards to distributed learning in the various districts was the objective of that meeting. And so we are pleased that we can continue that collaboration throughout the island to ensure the best interest of our students, which is their learning at this crucial time. We are reaching some students very well, whereas there are others. And the statistics that we looked at earlier this week spoke to that. For us, we know definitely which areas are lacking in terms of technological devices, in terms of internet access, connectivity. And so that data is meant to really highlight where the gaps are. The education officials are also concerned about the psychosocial state of students and parents. The psychological impact is something we must take very, very seriously. And I'm working very closely with our head of counseling. We have counselors in all of the districts that are continuing to work with our students. But we also encourage our parents, because our students are with them, they're your children to listen to them, to engage them, to find time to speak with them. We have no doubt that it's a difficult time for parents as well. Many of them have gone back to work. Caregivers may not always be in the household. There are lots of issues impacting us. But we know that if we do our bits together, and we encourage parents, if your child is having a particular issue at home that you need help with, reach out and similarly we want to continue that collaboration between the home and the school so that no child who needs that psychological and emotional help is left behind. Chief Education Officer Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer and at this critical moment for the education sector Bank of St. Lucia has made a considerable donation of laptops and desktop computers to 10 students and one school. The bank collaborated with the National Community Foundation in selecting the various recipients. We have more in this report. As the need for establishing and maintaining virtual classrooms increases across the island, educators are constantly being faced with the challenge of some students not having access to computers. In response to this new dilemma, Bank of St. Lucia has partnered with the National Community Foundation, the NCF, to donate 10 laptops to students in need and two desktop computers and a Cisco switch to the Stanley John Audler Memorial Secondary School. Understanding the positive impact this can have on the education sector, Deputy Managing Director of Bank of St. Lucia, Medford Francis, encourages other financial institutions and corporate St. Lucia to also support the initiative. COVID-19 is likely to remain with us for a while and we need to continue to support the education of our young people. From a banking community perspective, this could not have been more opportune in that this month is Financial Information Month and the theme is financial empowerment through education. So it's all coming together very nicely and of course I take the opportunity to really, really implore the private sector to come on board similar type initiatives According to Francis, it is very important that students get access to their teachers and colleagues while schools remain closed. Bank of St. Lucia has shared a long-term partnership with the NCF and are working together with officials to ensure that those most in need will receive the laptop. These laptops come at a very opportune time because with the influx of the COVID pandemic, we have children who are going to school and are not able to participate in classroom activities remotely because they don't have the devices. Principal of the Stanley John Audler Memorial Secondary School also echoed the gratitude of others present and shared a little on how they were going to put the new equipment to you. I can assure you that it will be put to good use, especially now when we are making a transition towards the virtual classroom and towards online instruction. Um, this equipment will definitely enhance and facilitate this transition. And um, as we move forward, I really hope that this um, relationship continues. Um, it is mutually beneficial, and I can assure you that my students and my staff will benefit immensely from this. As one of the members of the Bankers Association of St. Lucia, Bank of St. Lucia was able to give back to the education sector 
particularly during the month of October, which was observed by the ECCB and its affiliates as Financial Information Month. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The Eastern Caribbean Telecommunications Authority, ECTEL, has donated 10,000 U.S. dollars to the National Emergency Management Organization to aid in their COVID-19 response efforts. Managing Director of ECTEL, Andrew Millet, explained that each member state will be receiving a similar donation. In light of the growing threats of COVID-19 to the health of citizens and the economies of member states, the Board of Directors and the Council of Ministers approved the disbursement of US$10,000 to assist each member state to assist in the response for COVID-19. The St. Lucia National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, has been selected for receiving this disbursement. We hope that this donation will help NEMO build capacity to undertake its duties throughout St. Lucia at this critical juncture. ECTEL expresses its gratitude to the frontline personnel and reiterates the call by health authorities to follow all safety protocols to contain the spread of COVID-19. Director of the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, Doreen Gustav, expressed gratitude, indicating that the funds will strengthen NEMO's response mechanism. As you know, with COVID, it has made our capacity building effort at the community level very difficult and we depend heavily on volunteerism. We have our eyes and our ears at the community level and we know that one single point of failure is if there is an emergency and one community cannot respond and give, give us the necessary information so that we can make decisions quickly. And so we believe in capacity building. We believe in equipping our community, our district disaster committees, and, and strengthening them. We are embarking also on the elections for those um, district disaster committees. A number of them are due for elections. And because we do not have the necessary equipment and wherewithal to have these um, elections, we find that there are a number of persons in charge or just steering committees in place. And we need to move forward and strengthen this aspect of um, our response. Minister for Economic Development, Housing, Urban Renewal, Transport and Civil Aviation, Honorable Guy Joseph, explained that with the donation, NEMO's reach around the island will be even greater as it assists St. Lucians during this pandemic. So I think that um, making this small presentation of 10,000 US dollars to NEMO would be the best entity that we can provide this for because in one way or the other, everywhere in St. Lucia will feel the impact of that small donation because of how far-reaching the work of NEMO goes. Minister for Economic Development, Housing, Urban Renewal, Transport and Civil Aviation, Honorable Guy Joseph. And this is NTN Nightly. Please stay with us. COVID-19 is a new pandemic disease as declared by the World Health Organization. It is transmitted directly by respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes or indirectly through rubbing the face with contaminated hands. There is still no specific treatment or vaccine against COVID-19 and as such, the farming community should adhere to some special recommendations. Limit the number of crew members to only essential persons. Practice frequent hand washing and cleaning of all boat surfaces. Limit contact with the public, keeping a safe distance between each person. Limit unnecessary conversation with customers and pairs during the sale of fish. Wash hands frequently with soap and running water. 
or use 60 to 95% alcohol-based hand sanitizer until water and soap are available. Sneeze and cough in a flexed elbow or into a tissue, immediately discarding the used tissue into a bin and wash hands with soap and water or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer until soap and water is available and avoid close contact with persons having respiratory symptoms. More than ever before, your important role as gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow all St. Lucians access to freshly caught fish and other seafood. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's Best. Welcome back. As St. Lucia celebrates the contribution of men to society, the Boys Training Center is continuing in its mandate to help shape and rehabilitate its wards into productive and progressive young men. Hermody Mark reports on an exciting debate competition held at the institution. The wards of the Boys Training Center participated in a debate aimed at developing their emotional intelligence and teaching them the importance of individual social responsibility. The wards were presented in class with various scenarios and were given a chance to discuss how emotional intelligence can be applied to each situation. In preparing for the debate on the topic, is it okay to post nude photos online, the boys were briefed on the implications of such actions and were given the opportunity to understand a lived experience. Kishama Shigoshi is a guidance counselor at the Boys Training Center. When we decided to have the debate and to have the staff here as judges, we thought, let us not use one of our own members to, to solidify the, the point of um, how, how wrong it is to share nude photos. So we thought we would have someone who had a lived experience, who is also known to St. Lucia, who, to have had such a lived experience, who will be able to speak to the topic and help the boys understand the other side of the coin. In addition to aiding the wards in developing a sense of individual social responsibility, the exercise gave them a chance to develop research and public speaking skills. Shigoshi says she was impressed with the professionalism and initiative portrayed by the participants. Another thing I thought was impressive about the present, the preparation, is how they were so willing to rush through lunch and meet up with the staff in the, in the computer lab to research and prepare. And, and they actually did that for about three to four days. They rushed through lunch. Lunch is usually 12.30. By one o'clock, they were already in the lab researching, preparing, and practicing. So I thought that was very, very impressive. And it tells us that if the, if the walls of the center get the right environment and right motivation there's so much that they can achieve nothing will be the limit for the boys of the boys training center the debate was judged by staff of the boys training center and members of the royal saint Lucia police force the opposing team emerged victorious expressing the long-lasting implications of such actions is it okay to send nude photos online is it really <laughs> absolutely not Sending photos where yours or others genitalia, anal area, or breasts are exposed is not okay. Some may say it is okay because some people earn a living taking nude photos and posting on pornographic sites. For others, taking nude photos and circulating them is showing off their bodies. Their body is because their body is a work of art. So art is on display. Really? <laughs> Some of us may send photos all in the name of fun. A fun activity could come back to hunt you. The debate was an exercise planned by the therapeutic unit and facilitated through the Boys Training Center's Life Skills Program. From the Government Information Service, Homer Mark reporting. 
The Environmental Health Department says there is constant review of the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers feature defense in keeping with St. Lucia's evolving response to COVID-19. The island is scheduled to host the 31st installment of the nautical competition. Jesse Leos filed this report. Considering the health and safety of all involved, the Chief Environmental Health Officer Parker Ragnanan says it is too soon to confirm formats for featured events of the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers on island. The ARC is the first major event that St. Lucia will host since the onset of the pandemic. Well ahead of welcoming fleets in early December, a system of measures has been set in motion beginning across the Atlantic. This includes PCR testing of all rally participants at the Grand Canaria Island Port of Call and vessels' mandatory maritime declaration of health submissions. The port of arrival, IGY Rodney Bay Marina in St. Lucia, has been reinforced to observe COVID-19 protocols, which include routine medical screening, demarcating quarantine locations, and heightened security to ensure compliance. The events company of St. Lucia is working closely with its partners, the St. Lucia Tourism Authority and the World Cruising Club on the already scaled down ARC events and activities program in port. These slated activities are, however, subject to the shape that the national response to COVID-19 takes by December. So now it's a little bit too early to, to speak about um, the numbers because we know that this keeps changing. So for example, um, maybe three weeks ago, the numbers were 50. Correct. Um, today, it's at a 25 for a mass crowd activity. Um, we don't know what the status in terms of the country. Um, and so when I speak of the status, I'm talking about in terms of where we are going to be maybe two weeks from now in terms of the number of cases that are active. Because this is one of the things that determine the measures that you implement. St. Lucia's COVID-19 protocols are subject to review based on the infection rates on island. Following the country's updated status to clusters of cases and the first associated fatalities registered, amended national protocols to limit unnecessary social activity took effect on 16th November. Organizers of ARC events and activities are being guided by any adjustments in St. Lucia's protocols to ensure the health and safety of all involved. There are meetings at, at different intervals from time to time that discussions are happening in terms of the side events for the, for the ARC activity. I'm not aware that a final decision has been taken on them. Um, but clearly, if we, we continue to have um, the transmission and the spread of COVID-19 that we have now, we definitely have to look at limiting numbers um, in terms of how many persons can be at a particular event at any one time. There may also be a need to cancel events altogether. The ARC fleet of approximately 60 vessels will begin their journey on November 22nd, departing Las Palmas de Gran Canaria directly for St. Lucia. The adventure for approximately 26 ARC Plus vessels has already begun. They departed Cape Verde on November 19th, a brief stop over from Las Palmas de Gran Canaria, and are now bound for St. Lucia. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leonce reporting. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am General Norvell.